Hey guys, welcome to the HKC217 podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Sheffield Van Hire and this podcast is going to be talking about um, what we did at Clay Pigeon and his weekend at Clay Pigeon. Um, obviously, this episode is sponsored by Sheffield Van Hire. Um, do you want to go in a bit into detail about them? Yeah, so Sheffield Van Hire, they're a Patreon member who come on board, uh, I think they come on board this year, uh, with Nathan. Sheffield Van Hire, uh, they obviously hire vans. Uh, they also hire small vans, medium vans, long wheel base vans, Luton vans, low loaders, refrigerated vans and refrigerated trailers. I'd like to know what a refrigerated trailer is. Yeah. Um, answers on a postcard. So if you'd like to head over to Sheffield Van Hire Limited dot co dot UK or search for Sheffield Van Hire Limited on Facebook. Uh, I think they're also on Twitter and they're also on Instagram. Uh, and make sure you say that we sent your team hashtag HKC. So for the final time this year, I'm going to say... Let's roll in. Roll as in. we roll in. As we roll Come in. Come on. <laughs> so as we roll into the final round of the British Mini Bikes Championship, which was held at Clay Pigeon in or near Weymouth, which was in Dorset? I think it was in Dorset. I don't know. Dev- Dorset? It was anyway. Dorset, far. yeah, I can remember um... So the final round was a little bit far away, but yeah, we went to the final round and as we entered the final round of the championship, I've not really talked about this or we've not talked about this on the podcast, so we've not really done championship standings. Another reason why we didn't do championship standings is that when we recorded the podcast, a lot of the times the championship table had not been updated officially, so obviously I've been keeping track on it uh, on the spreadsheet, but we've not really mentioned it. didn't really want to mention that. It's yeah. changed position a few times. I think Hudson or Travis has been leading it most of the way through the season. I think at the start, Travis were, weren't it? Uh, no, you led it at the beginning of the season, then Travis yeah. took over, then you took back over and held on to it. So anyway, as we went into the final round of the championship, so I'm going to roll straight in to entering the final round of the B&B championship. You still had work to do. You went into the final round with a 10-point championship lead over Travis. So, we'll touch on a little bit of this. It's not actually in this, but we kind of knew as we went into the final round. Yeah. Kind of what you had to do a little bit. Um, we knew that it was still possible to lose the championship, definitely. Uh, especially if Travis won all three races. You pretty much knew on the little plan that we had, if it was a plan that we had, that you at least need to be or come in front of Travis one of them three races, at least. And there were so many different variations on what could have happened. That is just simplifying what could, what one of the scenarios that we knew that would have let Hudson win the championship. If he beat him once, Mm-hmm. More than likely, it was going to work out all right. But Hudson had to come bang behind him in race two or race three or any variation. I mean, I could go on and show it. There could be a flow diagram showing you different variations <laughs> of what could have happened. You definitely had to finish all three races. Um, so, like, the pressure was on a, a, a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Like, you were quite nervous getting into the weekend a little bit. But you knew what we had to yeah. do and we had a plan. Yeah. Um so as we rolled into practice, uh, it were really bad conditions, uh, and as expected, on session one, on practice day, <laughs> only you and Travis went out straight away. I think I think it must have been only you on that first one, and I mean yeah, the conditions were. were really really bad. Only you and Travis went out. Yeah, I think. The reason that we went out, and probably the same reason that Travis went out and Danny or Danny sent Travis out, was because we didn't know what was going to happen on Sunday. So. You kind of needed the wet practice because we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know if it was going to be raining Sunday. I mean, like it said, it was going to be thunderstorms on Sunday. Yeah. Um. The weather did come. It come at a different time to what we thought it would, but that weather did that weather it front, let's come. say, did eventually come. So. Uh, really good day Friday. Uh, not everybody had the transponders on. I don't think the live time was working anyway, but. Um, it transpired that we kind of knew what everybody had done. A few people, a few dads were talking to each other. Uh, I think Danny told me, uh, I told Danny that Hudson had done a 52, I think. 
Uh, I think I found this out on Saturday or Sunday, maybe. I think it was definitely Saturday. Uh, Valentino had done a 52 on Friday. Uh, I think Jack had done a 52 on Friday as well, or round about that. They were all pretty close. Uh, you could kind of tell on the track that they were all pretty close. So yeah. you were happy with your times, and your time were 52 on that Friday, which were, in some points, borderline unrideable, really, because it, like the, the weather were just spitting. The track was grippy. Yeah, yeah, it were, it were quite grippy compared to um, compared to Three Sisters. Three Sisters is obviously a very grippy track, but this came just un, under um, Three Sisters grip-wide in the wet. But still all right, though. Yes, yeah, yeah, still really good. So, yeah, so Friday, did as much practice as you could in what was sideways rain at some point. <laughs> yeah, and it uh, literally... Loads of spray. It came down whenever it wanted to. And, and it really, really come down. When it came down, it came down. So that was Friday. Everybody knuckled in or knuckled down. You still have work to do. And kind of like the idea of that was let's get as much wet practice as we can because it might be a wet race at some point on Sunday. Yeah. So rolled into Saturday. Better conditions. Still wet in the morning. Uh, windy. Uh, and the track were drying quite quickly. You could see a few patches drying. Uh, went out first practice. Happy with first practice. Uh, everybody went faster. Yeah, they did. Uh, straight away uh, in first practice. So the track were definitely dry. It was just a, l- a little bit less damp. I think people got into 48s. Yeah, I think, like, I think Jack, Jack might have been fastest in, in first practice one. Yeah, everyone, everyone at end of weekend. Um... So like Saturday, we're like kind of wrote off. But this was a dry day. This So we're like, let's think about this as a dry day in condition-wise, which it were, and as we'll go on to explain, it got better and better. Yeah, on Saturday. and by the end of the weekend, you kind of needed wet. You needed wet practice and dry pack practice. So everybody had gone faster than Friday. Rolled into Q one. Said rolled in again. So <laughs> went into Q one. Uh, you were confident that you were going to at least get the front row, but the track were drying. Uh, still went out on wet. So uh, everybody shuffled around the order for Q one a lot. Uh, Hudson was, I believe you were, f- I wouldn't say following, you were just a little bit behind Jack and Valentino. Yeah. Um, and... You got into P2, uh, you pulled in to try and get a clear track, spoke to Steve, who were doing the pit board for him. Uh, Steve were like, we're happy with that. Um, there was still probably like seven minutes left of that session. Yeah, so I came in. You came in, had a little chat, I mean like for 30 seconds, 30 went seconds, back out on a clear track. Uh, and as you come back round past Steve on the pit board, you dropped to what Steve had put were fourth. Actually, you were fifth. <laughs> and Steve just wanted to keep me calm. So, yeah, which Hudson knuckled down a little bit, pulled pin a little bit more, and he got into P1. And I mean, I need to look up these stats here, but everybody were pretty close there. He could yeah, have changed it at any moment. It, I think he were... stayed in P1. Did you have the P1 board for the rest of the session? I, yeah, yeah, I did. So, yeah, we're really... I wouldn't say we're an outstanding time, maybe... One third or a second, maybe yeah, faster. Yeah, two, I'll, I'll two pull tenths. The, I'll put the start up now um, for Q1. Um, I'm really happy with that. Like yeah. a front row start, you wanted a front row start, definitely. Uh, P1 and P2, we're in good positions there. Yeah. Uh, a little bit, P1 is what I would say should be where P1 is. The grids are equal yeah. in distance, distance, as in they're not set back. Uh, P1's a little bit better where it should be compared to other tracks where it's in a... I don't think it's in a, as good a place. But hey ho, P1. So, um, as we walked away from qualifying one, we pondered down the paddock and we thought it'd be fantastic if it rained now. Yeah. Um, we were joking about it. We were we? joking it that it rained. So, before that, anyway, you had to do qualifying on the 110 bike. Uh, sorry, on the one, in the 140s. So, you opted to run your 110 in the 140s. You went faster on your one foot on your 110 in the 140 session is and that's the reason why you you went on your 110 in the 141 yeah because the times were so close and you wanted to get a little bit more practicing and you went faster in q1 of the 140 race on your 110 that's confusing to say and you got your personal best of p2 on the grid in the 140 race but more imp- we weren't really bothered about that actually we're just more no. happy that you got you gone faster yeah yeah in that Q1 of the 140 race. Then, we joked, it'd be good if it rained now, as we were waiting for qualifying two. <laughs> uh, and 
probably half an hour before qualifying two, we're actually changing things. Yeah, we so were. So we changed the gearing a little bit because the gearing, you said that the gearing weren't right. In fact, in qualifying one, you actually said, I don't know how I did that with that gearing and got P1, yeah. if you can remember. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, so we, we changed the gearing a little bit. We got everything set up. Um, the rain was due to come and it just come. Yeah, it just went. Just it just went. So that pretty much wrote off Q2 fingers. for everybody. So the only people that went out in Q2 was uh, Valentino and Travis. Uh, yeah. We watched them on the live timing. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it was wet. So I wouldn't say, well, it's not detrimental to say that they were never going to beat that dry time. Well, yeah, fair, fair play. They did. They were actually really really pushing yeah they did a really good they, time because the fastest yeah. wet time on friday were probably like 51 52 seconds yeah and they as it we were watching the lifetime and like credit to them and they were at it as well both of them bang next to each other yeah um they went 48 yeah, which 48. we're really impressed with um which which were the times we were doing in the morning weren't it on on the friday morning 48s weren't it yeah probably so yeah so yeah it were right yeah very good Lap not times. 48, no, no, 48 right is faster, isn't it? 52 you finished on Friday, your fastest 52. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. So, it rained and that pretty much wrote off qualifying two for pretty much everybody, I think. Uh, so, it was a complete washout and we joked, it wasn't done yet. And it would be great if it rained, which it did. So, we rolled into race one. Rolled into. Yeah, that's the third time I've said it. So, <laughs> that was qualifying done. Uh, we all stopped... Obviously, it's uh, stopped over. We had a massive meal and whatever not. It's like they were really, really cool. Yeah, really good. Ready for race day. So, on race one, and again, I'll just touch over that a little bit again, saying that we knew what you had to do. You got front row. You kind of had to beat Travis at one point over this weekend uh, to make sure that the championship was yours. That was kind of the, I wouldn't say tactic, but you, you knew just, that that was an objective. That was... The objective. Yeah. You certainly couldn't let Travis beat you three times. Yeah, I had to. It did depend where Travis once. come. I yeah. mean, there were so many iterations. We actually simplified it a little bit for us and saying, "Listen, you just got to beat him at least once," uh, yeah. which I think worked. And better. if you can beat him, beat him. And if you can beat him, beat him. Uh, sounds easy to say that now. Not really. But it wasn't easy. <laughs> yeah. So into race one, we Hudson got a good start straight into the lead and got the whole shot led the race until lap three where Travis overtook you going into turn one. You felt like you had to keep your cool and keep calm. You were watching his lines. Uh, I felt, I felt this is coming obviously from Hudson. I felt like I had the pace along the start finish straight as I had better drive than him um, going along the start finish straight basically. basically. So you sat, sat behind him a little bit, had a few peaks. He creeped away yeah. a little bit, so he improved. Yeah. Uh, you improved a little bit more chasing him back. Uh, again, you had a couple of sneak peeks coming up to lap nine. Yeah, and I just decided to... And with three laps to go... Just went uh, for it and tried to hold him off. Went, yeah, like I had to, it was along the start-finish straight, pretty much where the the flag line were. Uh, sorry, the, the start line were. Yeah. And you got into first position, uh, which were really important, and you held on to that lead for three laps and took first position, which was really important because that meant that you had a championship lead of 15 points uh, because Travis come in second with 20 points. So that means you had a 15 point cushion. Again, mathematically, I mean, like we could have had a massive whiteboard uh, working out <laughs> five different scenarios, yeah. 20 different scenarios, what could happen. That was a good start to race one. Um, so as you went into race two, a little bit of pressure eased off you would you say yeah it was um you'd done yeah, one part of done, your little I'd job done quite yeah quite a big chunk of it um and it was i felt like in that first race that i had to come first just to get i mean it, like just to ease the pressure travis would bang behind us second as well. and third races i mean like that race in race one were a fantastic race so as they were I mean, like the pressure that Hudson were under, not only were he chasing Travis, obviously after losing the lead to Travis, Jack was bang behind Hudson as well. Yeah. Um, when it was Travis, Hudson and Jack. I mean, like Jack had a little peek at Hudson, probably on the back straight, would you say? Yeah. So like you knew that Travis, sorry, Jack were bang behind you. And I mean, like you could go through these scenarios now, like if Jack had got in front of Hudson, 
Hudson would have come in third. I wouldn't say it would have been a disaster, but it would have been what a, a bad case scenario if yeah. Hudson would have come third in race one. Jack come second and Travis come first because he would have took nine points out of you. Yeah, and then... Is that right? Yeah, nine points, yeah. He would have took nine points out of you, so you'd have gone into race two with a one-point lead. It's not very good. So, <laughs> obviously, I mean, like, again, it's all right saying this in after the fact, but that's our input. I wouldn't say that's how important race one were, but it were... It were quite a big thing. It were, it were a big-ish thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like Steve said, it's not done yet, but you've done one part of the, the plan this weekend. Yeah. So you rolled into race two. I said rolled in again. So you <laughs> went into race two, uh, started on pole, and got away with what I got away from, who I thought was Travis, but it was actually Jack. Uh, Travis had dropped to P4, I think he got stuck behind Valentino. Valentino did a move on him, move on him on the first corner. Well, yeah, on, on the first part of the race, I thought, I thought it was Travis behind me. Then I thought it was seen the pit board. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I thought it was Travis behind me, and then halfway through the race, I re- I thought this might be Valentino. Um, and then I was trying to figure out who it were. I couldn't see. Um, and then Steve put it up and said it was Jack on the pit board. Um, so I, that's when I figured out on the couple other laps. So that obviously helped me. Um, calm so, a little bit, yeah. yeah so calm. So I didn't know Travis was. So you led the me. race. Sorry to interrupt you there, but I'll get Sorry. back on track. So you led the race. Jack was in P2 behind you. Jack overtook you on lap nine, but you were in P2 and you knew that you had a good lead on, lead on Travis because. Obviously, Steve was showing you the pit board. Uh, you knew how far behind Travis were. I mean, like I think you could see him probably on the inside right at the back straight, probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he got into a little bit of a bal- battle with Valentino, but I think like, the point that like Valentino, I wouldn't say held him up, but that little exchange stopped the train on what happened on race one because basically it was Hudson, Travis, Jack, and then Travis, Hudson, Jack... Like that train didn't really change in yeah, race one, just... and in race two, you stayed behind Jack, and I mean, like Jack actually pulled away from you a little bit, but yeah. you could, you felt like you could ease off a little bit. You didn't need to push as hard, yeah, um, because you knew that you had, I don't know, I don't know what the gap were, but you had a little bit of a gap. You could see Travis on the track, and you knew yeah. that that were important. That you need forgetting about the win, you knew that you had to just come in front of Travis. The win would have been nice, yeah. It wouldn't have really changed anything for race three. We were... actually knew that. I were a bit disappointed. I thought I thought I could have got the win, um, but it was just what it were. And well, fair play to Jack. Fair as well, play like, to Jack. He did. He, he had cruising. He was cruising. Yeah, he were pulling away from. I'd be interested to know who did fastest lap time in lap two. I shall pull up that sat now on the screen. Bing. So we rolled into race three. Race three again. We had to do a hundred different diagrams on what could have happened, but in race three, it was a little bit more simplified. Yeah. Probably the most simplest explanation that we could have given you on your <laughs> yeah. rider pre-brief or post-brief after race two that we basically went into the caravan, had a little bit of a debrief, or to want them to know what the point situation were. And after race two, you were 19 points in the lead going into race three. So that basically meant in the simplest form is that if you finish the race in race three, no matter where you finished, you would have won the championship. Travis, we didn't really explain this to Hudson, but if if Hudson had uh, would have come off in race three, uh, the only way that Travis could have won the championship was become, was coming second or first. Yeah. Which could have happened very easily. Yeah, because uh, it just We takes didn't really explain that bit. Someone's come off and then... It didn't matter what happened, second. we would t- just have to stay on. And that was uh, our call, mine and Steve's call, to like, that's the easiest way to explain to you. Like, just stay on the bike. Yeah. Don't matter what you do, just stay on the bike. At that point, it was like, wow. Like, I felt, I felt like I'd done it. Obviously, it went over, but it, it was, weren't it over. Was just... We opted for wets as well because we knew yeah. the ra- there were a big rain front coming, yeah. um, which just... we didn't think we were going to come. I don't know if everybody had wets on that race for you. To be um, fair. Jack, Jack did, I think. I think I bet Jack, Travis did as well. Travis surely. probably did, yeah. Well, everyone, Valentino, I think did everyone did. Because Valentino didn't. They opted not to race because they knew that rain was coming. Oh. So they actually got to hold an area and went back and didn't start. Oh man. So you got to race three, this time in P2. I knew I basically had to finish the race and the championship was won. Uh, I let riders pass me 
earn. I finished in fourth position, but most importantly, I finished. It rained midway through the race, so we was I was unbelievably glad that we opted for wet tyres. So I mean, like you coasted round. Yeah, uh, coasted round. Coasted round in Super there. Super slow. Jack actually lapped you. Yeah, Jack and Travis, I think, lapped me. Did Travis catch up with you? Yeah, Travis, Sid, and everyone lapped me. I don't know if, Tra- I don't know if Travis did. I don't yeah, know. I, I think could, Sid yeah. did. Sid did and Travis, I can remember. Yeah, but they must have been thinking, what's going on here? Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and a weird little stat, I will have to look back on the record books on this one, that, since Hudson started racing, is the only ever race that is ever <laughs> finished last, ever. Apart from, obviously, a DNF. Steve that... Steve joked in, jokes when I when I um came in um that you you don't you haven't set the lap record you've slapped you've set the lap record for the slowest lap ever ever uh, on yeah, that I, track. I don't know what your lap times were they will have, we'll pull that stat up there but yeah that was slow. just an interesting th- thought that I thought wow that like that little thing's gone where Utter's never ever come last like right when he started on night is right beginning when he were in his novice season uh, rookie season whatever you call it all the way back then. Yeah. yeah, you never finished last, so I thought that with my name was in. I thought I pulled that stat out for you because I knew that stat. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so that was the championship one. Yeah. Um, we'll pull up a few little bits here now, so you can see on the screen if you're watching the video edition, where you can see uh, I stopped Hudson. We gave him a helmet, which you can see right here. Oh. Not the microphone. Oh, Dad. I'm just checking everything's working still. So yeah, we did it like a limited edition helmet. Uh, massive thanks to Mark from Eggs on Legs from that uh, who did that. Now I will say that that I weren't going to arrange anything to do anything like this, and then I changed my mind at the last minute, and I did change my mind at the last minute because I literally did it on the Thursday. I think. Yeah. Unbelievably. Very close. Um. So yeah, massive thanks for Mark for doing that. Also. Um, we got some confetti cannons. Um, um, I got some champagne bottles. Champagne. Um, again, I did that the last minute because I weren't going to do anything. Not that I'm superstitious <laughs> um, yeah. at all, but obviously I were superstitious because I, I opted not to do anything. But ultimately, I'm really glad that we did something. And I, I'll rewind this a little bit that at the beginning of the day, on the sat Sunday when obviously it was race day, Ooh. when it was race Sorry. day. Um, that we made. I said to Danny, um, no matter no matter what happens, I've got some champagne bottles, and whoever wins championship, Travis or Hudson, I'll give out champagne bottles at end end of race three, and they can spray each other, regardless. Yeah, and that were obviously really fun and good to. Come yeah, I think it. And I mean, like, I do feel gutted for Travis. Really yeah. gutted for Travis, and and again, like. The sportsmanship between us all and Danny, massive respect to Danny. Like, it's been fantastic all year. Obviously, he's not a person like not to talk to a rival. I'm not a person yeah. who's not talked to a rival. Utton and Travis have raced over the last couple of years, really good racing. They've brought each other on massively. Yeah. I mean, Travis is younger than Hudson as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Travis will come back strong. I believe Travis will come back stronger uh, from this. It'll still give him an hunger to win. Uh, and I thought we really thought I went over to Travis after Hudson had, Hudson had won and again Hudson said that he felt bad that they were like, were like celebrating that you won and Travis were outside there but he put a little smile on Travis's face because I went across to Travis and I gave him a champagne bottle and I said go and spray Hudson right in face and like <laughs> Travis, Jack and Hudson were like spraying each other which I, I think like yeah. the, that were a nice finish a little bit and Travis actually went out and did his race three on race his 140 after that Um which were unbelievable, especially after all that drama. Yeah. Um, so yeah, good composure for that. So that was the that was the championship over and done we. So Hudson won the championship. I've not got the points here, but I will put the standings up. So Hudson coming first yeah. position of the Ovale one ten cup. Uh Travis coming second position, Jack coming third position. Uh I believe I forgot what the points were. I did actually look up a day. Uh, yeah. I have actually got I have actually got the stats somewhere. Right, just... Well, aren't we gonna say the standings now? I'm yeah, not... I will just have a little look there. So the standings, anyway, for the one ten cup were Hudson were on three hundred ninety seven points, Travis were on three hundred eighty one points. So Hudson won Travis by a mere sixteen points, really, which is not really much. You know what I mean, it was not much, but... a good half for 
championship fair racing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, fair racing. Again, they brought each other on good. Jack comes strong towards end of championship as well. Yeah. So, just to recap a little bit before that, obviously, if we rewind a little bit, all the way back to race one, uh, you did your 110 race, race one. Yeah. And then you did your 140 race, one. So, you'd obviously qualified on pole on race one. Uh, and Hudson was in P2. Uh, I just do a little recap on what happened in that 140 race. So Hudson were on his 110. Uh, Wilson were on his 140, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Wilson's obviously won that 140 championship. Uh, Hudson and Trav- uh, Hudson beat Wilson off at line a little bit, and then he overtook uh, Hudson back on turn one. And then like the battle continued on because it was only like 10 minutes after race one. Yeah. With Hudson and Travis again. Hudson and Travis were both on the 110 bikes. And I mean, this was like. A copy of race one on the one ten, but yeah. in the 140 race, this time they exchanged his places a few times. Travis overtook him on corner one. I think he outbraked him on corner one. He might have took you on back straight once as well. No, um, what what on? Yeah, no, Travis didn't. Um, he just over. did it on turn one. No, he did it um in the infield, but he did it on infield. So yeah, yeah. sorry, they uh, they exchanged places a few times, and I mean, it, it for Hudson, it were an unnecessary race, really. Um, but Hudson wanted to race it. Steve were putting Think Calm on the pit board because Hudson and Travis it. were just at it, bang at each other. They exchanged places about three times. Hudson felt like um, he could do the same move on Travis on what he did in race one. Now, bear in mind, he only did that one time Yeah. At, uh, in the 110 race. I think you did that exact move to him two times on that track, maybe three yeah. times, Yeah. and you held it back until the last lap. Uh, and, and in that race, because Travis was so fast in the infield and everywhere, everywhere else, um, it was I had to do it on the last possible moment in the race that you could do it, and obviously the last lap. So the did it on the last lap. Um, I could kind of tell it, it were coming. I, I could see that it were coming. Like I believe, obviously Hudson's gearing might have been a little bit different there. So this was the drive out of the final corner. Hudson could get right up to Travis, super yeah. close, uh, up along the start, finish straight. Probably closest finish that I've ever seen Hudson involved with. First time <laughs> that he's had a uh, like a photo finish, if you were looking at the photo finish, but the, I could tell Hudson had won looking at where the line was physically on the track, but you don't know where the GPS marker is. Uh, and it transpired that Hudson pipped him on the line by 0.009 of a second which were unbelievable. Um, <laughs> Hudson said that we were right was doing that. Steve were going crackers that you were you were racing that hard. Steve came in saying, can you read? Because <laughs> he had calm in big letters on board. I weren't looking at board all the way through race. So that was probably one of the best races. Like, that were really good. If that had been race one, my gosh, in the 110 race, <laughs> I'd have been having kittens. That would have been unbelievable. We were a fantastic race, that. Uh, so after that, we opted that we didn't, want to really race well we said that we didn't uh, want yeah. you to race in race two and race three yeah. Hudson wanted to race in race two and race three I wanted to and then it makes sense not to though. It, yeah yeah because um, if you come off smash the bike up hurt yourself yeah yeah there are a lot of scenarios like come off lose your mojo lose your lap not lose your lap time but lose confidence in bike. there's a lot of situations yeah. there, and ultimately obviously we're, we're concentrating on the 110 Championship, so but that were a fantastic race, and I mean, like, fair play to Travis again. That that were a wicked yeah. race, probably better than race one, probably best race of season. I mean, like, obviously, sucks for what happened beating Travis like that, but yeah, for you, but you were like, wow, that were amazing. <laughs> on both sides, it were a good race, so that yeah. concludes that. So, we got Elmate, we did all that stuff, sprayed him with champagne, all kids having a massive laugh. Uh, we up to, to stay on Sunday, which were really cool as well. Yeah, um, they were. Uh, we opted to like it's a long drive back. Uh, Ike signed Hudson's helmet. Ike were there. That's pretty cool. I'll flash that up there. Obviously, we've got this helmet there that's signed by the main Ovale man himself. So that concluded that. And Hudson is the 110. The 110 champ, champ. Champ. As I've been calling him all week. <laughs> um, which are fantastic. You know I mean, like, I wouldn't, me personally, just saying this from my point of view, like, when we started this, I didn't even know if we were going to win a race. 
well, not even win a race. At first, I'd go back. I didn't even know if we were going to not finish last. I didn't know we were going to get a podium. I didn't know we were going to win a race in the 90s. I didn't know how this season we're going to go. And it started off really well. And you like won straight away on your GP. I mean, like that exchange that... over from that 90s to GP were min, really. I didn't yeah, really expect com- that to happen. Compared you... to other people, quite a lot of people struggle. Yeah, what, what... well, I wouldn't say struggle, but it takes a while for them to. I mean, change. like Hudson could have raced in that night championship one more year, and Travis could have as well. Yeah, I think both of us, like Danny, like said that, like it was the right decision that to like not race in that night championship again. It was um, well, obviously it were, weren't it? <laughs> yeah, we've seen examples before. Like not saying, well, we've seen examples before of people running both bikes in between. And, and I don't think it really worked. Like, if you are going to do this, like, if you're listening to any advice, not not from me, not that I know anything, from what I've just seen, I think, like, Jack's done one of the right routes that yeah. Jack's on his GP night here and he's on his 110. And you could see how Jack's progressed better through the year because he's basically going from the same bike with a 90 engine and he's going to the same bike with a 110 engine and racing with you guys. And s- slowly, as he's got used to doing that bike and got used to that GP bike, bearing in mind he'd not rode a GP bike at all, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, he would. Um, yeah, oh, th- yeah, th- yeah, he did have GP yeah, bike I th- before. Yeah, I think he did. I mean, like, being on that, that bike. Yeah, that was definitely 90, right 110, 90, 110. We tried to do that this year with the 140, yeah. 110. But it's... Ultimately, we, like, use the track time on yeah. the 110 because you need, like, you need to constantly improve that 110 time. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, fantastic weekend. Unbelievable weekend, in fact. Uh, one of the best weekends ever. We stopped all on Sunday. There must have been like 35 of us that stopped over Sunday. Yeah. Massive thank you to Rowan. Uh, we all went in there, um, like their motor home, massive awning that they've got. Uh, we all ordered a takeaway. In. And obviously they weren't, we weren't only celebrating my but, championship oh yeah, we win. Yeah, so we're they were celebrating Rowan, Rowan had won championship Rowan. as well. Unfortunately, Luca had been pushed to second or third in that one night of championship because of what happened at Wilton Mill. That's obviously sad, but he's still got a championship trophy yeah, for coming second or third in that championship. Uh, also, Ralph got his first podium in the 140s. That was fantastic as well. Yeah, we all celebrated um, that. A, few, a lot of people wrapping up the championship that weekend. Yeah. So we'll roll through and we'll go on to the next bit. Um, so... We'll go through the results and we'll show the standings. So when I'm reading the top three, I'll say this a little bit better this time. So this is the, these are the results, and then I'll show I'll flash up the championship table, table from that championship. So this is the AMR Moto SM, GP. well SM90 championship first. So in oh, third yeah, position, and this again this is to do with clay pigeon. So these are the clay pigeon results overall. It's Joshua Herring in second position. It's Caden Heron. And it's in first position, it's Leo Soliux, who we know when we swipe onto the next screen, uh, this was a tight, tighter championship. Oh, yeah. I believe it was tighter. Well, not really, actually, no. But no, not really. 30, well, it still could have gone to the last day. Yeah. Anyway, so championship standings overall in the AMR 1, AMR 90 championship is Harrison Quinsett in third position. In second position, it's Joshua Heron. And in first position, congratulations to somebody who you raced with last year as well. Yeah, Harrison and Quincy. Up, uh, no, in th- in first position. First, it's oh sorry, yep, I meant wrong one. Leo Soliu. And Leo Soliu in first position, who's like come on really well. Yeah. Um, so he's a he's a SM ninety championship champion. Uh, we'll look over to the next one, which is. Not this one that we're looking at here. That we do know that Jack Hamilton won the ninety AMR ninety Mini GP Championship. Yeah. Um. So he's won that championship as well. Um. So congratulations to Jack Hamilton. Yeah. So we move over to the Moto Ovale One Ten Cup, which is obviously the race that Hudson's in. So in third position it was Travis Shaw, and in second position it was. Me. Hudson Cooper. And in first position overall at Clay was Jack, ja- Jack Hamilton. Hamilton. And then we roll over to the championship standings. And in third position in the championship, it finished Jack, Jack. Hamilton. In second position, it finished Travis, Travis Shaw. Shaw. And in first position, congratulations, it was me. 
Hudson Cooper. So that's that one. Uh, we'll go into the uh, Ugly & Co. JSM. Try that again. We'll go to the Ugly & Co. <laughs> Mini GP 140 Championship. 140 at clay. So in third position, it was Valentino Kirk. In second Kelly position, Kirk. it was Wilson Dilks. And in first position, and I believe that that's his first Mini GP 140 win, it was Travis Shaw. So that was fantastic, that. Yeah, because um, Wilson, I don't think he did the final race, did he? Uh, well, I don't want to, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, that's yeah. like taking away from his Yeah, I know, but obviously Travis did an amazing job in, in that as well. Yeah, I think he got a podium, his first podium the last round. Uh, I think yeah. he come second or third uh, overall the last round, so he got his first 140 trophy, and that's his first 140 win. And there, you got to be in it to win it. Yeah. And he won it. <laughs> yeah. So congratulations to Travis. And then we look over to the mini. I've got so many different words here. So mini this GP. is the Ugly Co. Mini, mini GP, GP 140, 140 Championship table, and in third position it's Trevero. He just says Trevero on the stand, isn't it? Totally <laughs> Trevero. In second position is Tyler Humphreys. And in first position, congratulations to the Mini GP Ugly and Co. 140 champion, Super Wilson Dilks. Uh, as we look at that championship table, you can see that Travis come fourth in that championship. So congratulations to Travis. That's really yeah. good. Um, you come sixth in that championship as well. Yeah. Which is a good crack at whip. Yeah. On your first yeah, attempt, that's that. Too bad. Um, and considering we didn't actually, we, re- we opted not to race a couple few of them races we missed out two on that final round yeah you can see uh them. we didn't race one at we didn't do one at uh ella park uh, yeah cause we didn't hurt. Do... yeah yeah because um... we didn't do one at wilton mill because your neck were hurting as well and obviously this round as well yeah so you've missed like five five well let's say two there so you missed four of the, four of them rounds yeah but anyway I again know. you've got to be in it to win it <laughs> so that good crack at whip that really and yeah. again, like majority of that season, pretty much you run like you won ten there. Definitely running in first round. Yeah, yeah, you can't you can't forget that that I was running about one ten the pretty much whole time, except from a couple of races. On on and off, yeah, I think you run it yeah. at Ella Park. Yeah. So yeah. anyway. So we go through to the Ugly Co JSM one forty. So in third position in that, congratulations to Arnie Carr. In second position it's Joel, Joel Grieg. And in first position, it's George Bowles. So congratulations to Joel B- George Bowles for winning the Ugly & Co. JSM 148 Championship. Uh, George Bowles, you'll know and you'll have seen him that he actually did a couple of, I think he's done two wild cards at British Talent Cup. Yeah, he has. So it's somebody we know like pretty well. Good family, good kid, yep. good laugh. <laughs> so yeah, and we go into the next one which is i've not got the stats there but i do know that this, this is, is the 160, 160. ovali cup so the 160 ovali cup was in third position thorley trevero oh, it says it on this one <laughs> in second position it's tyler humphreys and in first position it's wilson dilk so congratulations to wilson dilk now this standings as well if you look at the the standings there, that uh, this also counted towards the FIM Mini GP Championship. Unfortunately, Wilson were too young to qualify for that. So yeah. Tyler Humphreys uh, and Thorley Trevero are out in Valencia like next week, uh, yeah. racing in the World Finals, which was super super excited about. Um, I'm sure Wilson will be back cracking the whip at that next year <laughs> yeah. when he's eligible. So unfortunately, when able to go just because of the age rulings but excited for Tyler excited for Thorley excited to see Wilson next year as well yeah Um, really really good competitive championship that and again like you'll see some links we'll be sharing on social media that uh, there's a lot of there should be a lot of coverage should be live races on that yeah so we go over to the mini GP 190 coastline graphics cup yeah. Uh, I don't and think that's right there, what I've got on that graphic there, Wilson Dilks. No, no, Wilson Dilks raced his 160 in the 190s. Yeah, but I don't know if he come in third position. Did he not? I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Ooh, anyway, that, right. ma- that might be that might be wrong. What I do know is Izzy Carter come in second position. Okay. Overall, and Kobe 
Garbet come in first position and that secured and I'm gonna to have to skip forward a little bit that secured uh, Kobe who uh, sorry in third position um, Luca Wilkinson so yeah. Luca unfortunately got pushed down into third position on that 190 uh, GP 190 championship yeah. uh, because they obviously misses like the last two rounds in second position it's Izzy Carter and in first position who we celebrated there and Steve was there and Luca was there and they celebrated equally with them like it, Kobe won that one yeah um so yeah that that were really good felt a little bit sad for Luca but he took it like a man <laughs> um he weren't disappointed he weren't down all day in fact credit to him and Steve like they come yeah, to the final round a long way come a long way to support us so we'll go into the Mini GP 190 uh, senior class. So in third position, it was Tim Patterson at Clay Pigeon. In second position, it was Andrew Thompson. And in first position, it was Peter Hickman. Hickey Sixtet, who come that weekend just to mess up that championship. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> just to come along and have a little blast round. Obviously, he's a super busy guy. Uh, I will look at the standings there. So there's a 190 championship standings, which it shows you. Brian Hamilton, Andrew Thompson and Tim Patterson winning it. But also there was another sub uh, race in that, which is the Coastline Graphics Cup. So in third position, it's Simon Bogg. In second position, it's Tim Patterson. And in first position, it's Andrew Thompson. Again, I'll say this now, that looking at these results, it's not always set in stone. I'm only yeah. going on, don't shoot the messenger. I'm only going on what it says on the B&B website. <laughs> we will do a final... Um, Final, final roundup of round. the year, and we'll, I, as we're speaking now, the B and B website are actually going up and showing page by class by class who's won. Uh, Hudson submitted his photo for the one ten class. Yeah. Obviously, we we kind of know what's happened in that one, but and, until you kind of see that that post, you kind of know what's happened. So we roll in to, uh, the I've said rolled in again. We go to the Simoto one forty class. So in third position it's Stephen Humphreys uh, sorry this is the clay pigeon res overall results so this is in third position Stephen Humphreys in second position it's James Sidebottom and in you first place saying this. it's Harvey Lathrop <laughs> and I say Lanthorpe is that Lanthorpe, right? Lathrop. Yeah that's totally wrong so it's Lathrop yeah so he's running AMR Massive congratulations to AMR. So that's AMR's first season. So that's yeah. meant to be a totally stock bike as well. Um, I mean, like um, Andy and his wife, they've been fantastic this year. They've really settled in really good in the championship. I hope they've really enjoyed it. And like yeah. the, the first crack of the whip, uh, they've won a 140 <laughs> championship, which is absolutely fantastic. So really Arv is like riding for AMR. So that's really good as well. So the overall standings in that championship was... Third position, Stephen Humphreys. Second position, Ben Lord. And Ben's been riding for AMR as well. Yeah, yeah. So they've actually got a 1-2 in that. And in first position, it's Har Harvey Lathrop. Lathrop. Don't say Lanthorpe. Um, so I congratulations to AMR and congratulations to Harvey. So we're going to the next one, which is the... Uh, let me have a look. Yeah, okay, yeah, so this is the mini bike 160 class pit bike spares from Clay Pigeon. So in third position, it's Simon Portus. In second position, it's Nathan Gardner, who I believe is, uh, that's, that's Harrison Quince's uncle, isn't it, or something? I don't know, I don't know. I'm sure it is, I'm sure it is. Anyway. You might know. And in first position, it's Andrew Thompson, who we know, Andy, yeah. really well. So he's riding an Ovali 160 and that. Uh, I think you can just run whatever you want in there. It can be Supermoto, it can be Mini GP. Yeah, obviously he's riding his Mini GP there. I One six to ten inch, I think. Yeah. So congratulations. Oh, sorry, that's the results on that round. Yeah. So we go into the overall results of that championship. So in third position, it's Andrew Thompson. It says Andrew Andrew Thompson there. In second position, yeah. it's Andrew Rayfield, and in first position. In the 160 Mini GP JSM Mini GP, whatever it's called, uh, pit bikes 160, yeah, uh, Harvey Lathorpe, Lathorpe, yeah, Lathorpe, 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 
Sorry, apologies. <laughs> <laughs> so we go into the mini bike. Vets 160 uh, for Clear Pigeon overall. And in second position, it's Michael Judkins. And in first position, it is... Mike... No... no. Mike Nellians. Nellans. Nellans. <laughs> Nell- Nell- Nellians. Oh, gosh. Anyway, <laughs> Nellians. Nell- Nellians. 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 So, apologies. Apologies. So they, that was the uh, um, Vets 160. I don't know why I'm saying apologies. for laughing at his name. Oh, I'm just laughing at how rubbish we are at saying names. <laughs> so... In third position in that uh, Vets Championship, it was Tony <laughs> Reveille. Reveille. In second position, it was Michael Judkins. And in first position, it was Michael. <laughs> yeah, Michael. Just Michael. Michael, Michael yeah. Nellins. Yeah, no, Nellins. 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 So, we go into the Super Mini for Clear Pigeon. Overall results. In third position, it was Louis Smith. In second position, it was... Jamie Callan, and in first position it was Lawrence Wardle. Wardle. And we go into the championship table for the Super Minis. Uh, in third position, Jamie Callan. In second position, Louis, Louis Smith. Smith. And in first position, Lawrence Wardle. Wardle. Congratulations to Lawrence Wardle. And we talked about these numbers being wrong, or we didn't understand it. Um, so in the points. they have double points they in that for points. some strange reason. No idea why. Don't know why. Uh, so if you win a race, you get 50 points. If you come second in the race, you get 40 points. And if you come third in the race, you get it is actually 32 a bit, points. It is actually a bit more simple, that. So it's not like in the fives, it's just tens. Or not, yeah, but, yeah. Well, I don't again, know. I don't, it, to me, it doesn't make a difference. But <laughs> Well, it does make a difference. But you're getting double points. So anyway. Anyway. So that is the championship standings. And the overall results for Clay Pigeon will go on to the mm-hmm. Fantasy League. Yep. Um, and we're rolling into the final round, so we'll flash these up and go through these quickly. Uh, again, there's a prize for coming overall first in this Fantasy League. We've had over 85 players this year. It's been fantastic. Make sure you yeah. get involved next year. We're going to come back bigger and better. Hopefully, we'll get more sponsors on board RW Paintworks have come on board. They're sponsoring and they're going to give away some prizes from their RW Paintworks accessory store. Um, so Playing Card Company, he's going to uh, do uh, some prizes. I think he's got a £20 gift voucher for a card. Like they do all custom cards. So custom cards, um, gift voucher or something like that. So we're going to do that. We're also going to chuck in a few bits and bobs ourselves for that. So we're going to yeah. do an overall winner. And we're going to struggle to find out who these overall winners are because we've got no emails associated with them. So hopefully they listen to the podcast. Hopefully they must follow Hudson on socials because there's 85 people here that we, we only know probably 75 of these people in this league. <laughs> For instance, in first position, and it looks like he's got it sewn up, it's BR, BRT Solo 96 from India. Uh, he's pretty much got this championship wrapped up there, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, in second position, it's EA team or E A R team from Portugal, yeah, Portugal. That yeah. Um, in third position, it's Promicia Racing. I love saying that Promicia Racing. <laughs> I'd have to search them, I might be able to find out some info. Yeah, um, and they're from Italy. Italy. In fourth position, it's team, team JD from Britain, and in fifth position, it's MVET from uh, the USA, USA, America. Um, I'm just trying to look on there. So, like, for second place, it's quite, it's quite tight for second place, isn't it? Isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's quite tight. Yeah, look. yeah very tight. So, Not rolling right. down the people that we do know. So, El Loco, which is Luca Wilkinson, has used his... Oh, he's still got one left. He's, he's got he's one left, one. but he's, he's used one, so he's probably... Luca's in mix there for jumping up to, like, second. Yeah, he could... Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, all, it's all tight all the way down to so second. So, Luca's done fantastic in that. So, Luca's in seventh position. Uh, I've had a massive surge up the rankings and I've got up to is somebody else in front of me? Uh, no, nobody I know. So I'm in eighteenth position. Yeah. Um I'm just trying to stay in front of RW Paintworks, which is close. In twentieth position. Uh other people that we know, Rambo is in twenty fifth position. Rambo yeah. could he have a sniff there, John? 
Um, it's 40 but no, not really. Uh, although John, John and Dan is. from S20 Racing, which they're, is S20 Doors and Floors, they are battling. They are battling. There's actually this point. One... Point five or a point in between them. Point five of a point between them. No bonuses. In fact, if we have a little look on what they've got up, we do know that um, Dan's got a bit of a better lineup than I'm not going to press it. Dan's got a bit of a better lineup than um, John. Steve's still there. I know he's a bit out of mix. So Steve's in twenty eighth position. Yeah. Well, I just have to keep on scrolling here and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. scrolling. Hudson's in fiftieth position. (laughs) Uh, Fiftieth. 48th. 48th position. Oh, sorry. 48th position. Uh, and Jack, who oh, we've talked about before, Jack's in 69th position. He joined quite late. Um, Hopefully he can get a new start um, next year. Yeah, and I want everybody to, like, everybody to get involved with yeah. this next year. I want it to come back bigger and better. I'm just going to try and get some prizes. We don't make no money from this. It's been fun saying these all year, really. Yeah. We've enjoyed doing yeah, it every it round. Forgetting each funny. round as well. Forgetting... I've been on top of mine. I am. <laughs> That's what I mean. 48th. Yeah, you need to be on top of it. You need to swap yeah. them around and whatever not. So, yeah, there's 85 people in that league. Unbelievably, two people have joined with one round to go. So, I don't know why they've done that. Don't know why. Uh, we have got a link on there in the description. So, if people did know it. So, if... And I'd, I'd want to do it better next year. Yeah. Uh, really chuffed that we had 85 people. We had no idea, like, it were going to grow that much. Yeah, we thought we'd be we'd getting... 10. We thought we had 10, yeah. So, it's been absolutely fantastic. And then just like blown up so that is that have we got anything else to cover um no that's it that covers pretty much everything i hope yeah yeah so so if you want to uh, just to wrap up there so obviously that's the final round of the championship i hope you've enjoyed listening to these podcasts over the year uh, it's been really good recording them yeah uh, it's been really good looking back and talking about everything that we've done each round, I think it's a good little like review thing to look back on, even just for us to look back on. Yeah. Um, we've got some exciting things to come up. So obviously, we talked about that we did the Patreon flat track day. So we've got some more exciting stuff coming up with the Patreon thing. So we've got, yeah. um, we've got plans in place to potentially be doing a trials day up at Inch Perfect Trials. We're on about potentially doing, um some more flat tracking again obviously we, a lot of people have talked, shown interest in that yeah. we're on about go-karting we might even do some paintballing uh, some fun. days like that the go-karting thing um there's like a there's a few uh, there's a few companies where you can do it where it's dad and lad so the parents can race and the dads can race i've actually been thinking about that today a little bit where we could actually do a kids championship and an adult championship and have yeah, like yeah. a hkc Cart in cup or something. Yeah, that'd be um, cool. So that that's really good. We're not doing it to make any money, are we? We're just doing it for fun. If you want to get involved in that and you want to make sure that you get a place, and this is the only reason why I'm doing this or why we're doing this, is that if you join in on the Patreon level at one pound a month, you will find out and be able to reserve your place first because we're always going to offer out places for these days to Patreons only. So we're not trying to get you to pay. No, not Patreons. No, we'll. Offer it out to a Patreon. Patreons will get offered first. First, and then, and then it's opened up to everybody. It's opened up to everyone. And there might be spaces for everybody. Join. I'm yeah. just doing it that way. I think that's a fair way of doing it. Um, um, and I mean, like, if you pay one pound a month, you're going to pay twelve pound over here, and it's not exactly you breaking bank there to yeah. be involved. But it's a fair way of doing it. Yeah. And, we, and the, the Patreons are like sponsors as well, like high level sponsors. It's not just like people paying a pound a month. There's high level sponsors there, so yeah, it gets yeah. offered to everybody in that that way i think it's a fair way of doing it yeah um and we're excited to do some of that stuff over we now we've got some exciting news coming up to do with what we're up to next as well uh, i'm sure you'll be seeing that on social media tomorrow hopefully <laughs> yeah um or today depending on when you're listening to this podcast if you're listening to this podcast don't forget you can watch the video edition which includes pictures uh live footage if available um of the racing over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there's like behind the scenes video that we flash up as we're talking about it. So that's on YouTube. It's also on Spotify video. Yep. So you can watch it on Spotify video. Not a lot of people know that, that on Spotify you can watch that video. So if you open up the Spotify app on, on your phone, if you go and look at it when it's playing, it actually shows you the video that I'm talking about. If you do listen on Spotify, it's also available on audio only format everywhere. Um, that. Searching your 
podcast app for the HKC217 podcast. You know that because you're obviously listening. Yeah. Um, a lot of people like to listen to it as they're traveling to racing or traveling to whatever they're doing. Yep. Uh, if you want to leave a message or a voice message, there's a link in the description. You just click on that link. It pops up a web page where you can record it straight on your phone and we can put that voice message straight into this podcast. And you can ask a question for us to answer. Yep. Um, yeah, obviously any suggestions. Any questions. suggestions that you want to put in there, you can chuck them in that as, as well. Yep. Um, I do actually have... I haven't got my phone, have I? I do know that somebody asked a question, they emailed in a question and I forgot it. Well, we'll have to answer it in... We'll do that in the Roundup podcast. In the Roundup one, yeah. Right. Yeah. So that is that. Don't forget to follow Hudson on all socials. Uh, search for at Hudson Guy Cooper. Yeah. Uh, if you say if you're struggling to put that in, search for the hashtag HKC217. Hudson's socials are on everything. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you can. Uh, we really appreciate that. We're trying to build up on that channel, which is going really well. Yeah. Uh, and if you just want to check everything out that we're up to, you can go to hkc217.co.uk and you can pretty much see everything on there. Uh, links in the description. Uh, and that's it for the 2022 season. Yeah. And that's a wrap. wrap. So not only are we rolling in, we're rolling out. <laughs> so yeah. we'll see you at the next podcast which will more than likely be a roundup we've got some real exciting things to be talking about soon in the next up and coming weeks uh, we'll be doing a podcast we've got a exciting interview that we've got sorted as well uh we'll be on the podcast uh Hudson don't know about that yet uh so thanks for listening hope you enjoyed it this year see you at the next one bye